We make it cool to be sunk. We make it cool to be sunk. We make it cool to be sunk. Ready to get going, we see the Timberwolves. It's the Timberwolves in Minnesota for a little interconference action here at the Target Center. Now a chance to check out tonight's starting lineups. And guys, what do you think we'll be seeing from Jeff Teague in this one? Yeah, he just brings so much speed and athleticism to the table, and that comes across more than anywhere else in the transition game. Well, in the solo transition game, Steve, he loves taking it rack to rack, and like you said, he's got the speed to do it. The Hawks here looking to pick up one on the road before returning to Atlanta. The big story here is the return of Paul Millsap. He's been sidelined with an injury. That was a short leave of absence, and he's back in the fold now, Kevin. We'll see if he can pick right up where he left off. Yeah, and in the grand scheme of things, his injury wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, a little bit longer, and it could have been. You know, the Timberwolves have taken on an increasingly international character. Players like J.J. Perea, Rubio, Nikola Pekovic, and Alexei Sved, all important contributors. Tip off goes to Minnesota. Rubio, the pass to Thunder. That's good. It's Rubio with the assist. Thunder's got the game going with his first points of the game for the Timberwolves. And Clark, a lot of European players used to this cold weather. Maybe that's why the Timberwolves keep going after them. <laughs> well, maybe that's part of it. I don't know. But they've had pretty good luck with the international players. Some good talent that they've put together. It's stolen by Martin. Now running it up the court, Martin pushing it up. Taken away by Williams. Fast break, the Hawks. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. The Hawks shooting their first free throws tonight. The first trip to the stripe in this one. And he knocks down the first one. And Williams drops them both. That's a familiar sight. He hardly ever wastes his chances at the line. Cashes in regularly. Rubio the pass to Thunder. This one for three. There's the bucket. Good. Thunder's got five. It's going to be tough for the defense today. If he's got his A game rolling here tonight, we'll see. Rubio against T. Passes it to Williams. He dishes it to Brandt. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Williams. Well, nice way there to get your first basket of the game. Looking at the last game for the Atlanta Hawks, it was a loss to the Suns. Well, there was a lack of discipline on their part in that game, guys. They committed a lot of silly fouls, and it hurt them. It sure did. I mean, they just didn't seem to figure out how to defend without fouling, Steve. That was just almost hard to comprehend. Timberwolves on defense. Four-point game. They beat the Hawks during their last encounter in Atlanta. Yeah, they basically cruised to a big win in that last meeting by getting a lot of the opposing starters out of the game early with foul trouble. For Minnesota, they've gotten their first three shots to go in for them to start off this game. And it's blocked by Brand. And here is Teague. His last outing, 16 points for him. And off target as he starts the game 0 for 1. Clark, how about what Steve just brought up? The foul trouble they caused was something that a lot of people pointed to. You know what? I don't know if it was specifically their intentional game plan or whether they got the benefit of the calls, but either way, we do know it worked to the benefit of their team. Here's Thunder. He had a career game last time out. Bucket after bucket. And good on the basket. Look it. Well, they've settled into their offense very quickly here today. Yeah, they're zoned in, making the most out of their possessions here. 
Horford against Pekovic. Here's Williams, and it is flushed down with a nice jam. I like that they're taking it inside and taking advantage of each opportunity. Clark to chip away at the deficit. Yeah, and doing it with the dunk is a major energizer, too. Gets the momentum going. Yeah, and I think the interior defense has good a job offensively as, as we saw. The defensive presence was almost non-existent. They may see this lead disappear if they continue to give up those easy points. Knocked away. Just under three and a half minutes gone here in the first quarter. Here's Horford. The shot is off. So Minnesota will take it the other way. Got to keep rolling here following the win against Memphis. It was an emphatic win for them, especially considering that it was on the road. No question, by the way, that it was their offense that carried. Steve, I love the way they attacked at every opportunity. They never were on their heels, and eventually that allowed them to pull away. Williams kicks to Brand. Shot's good. Rubio with it. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. Brand comes to help. Here's Caffey. Misses off the left iron. The defense better not make a habit of giving him that shot. I mean, he doesn't miss many of them. Shots good by Williams. Took advantage of some shoddy defense there. They've got to at least get a finger on it. And now Doris Burke has an update from the sidelines. Yes, Kevin. Well, Rick Adelman had some advice for his team over that last break. The strategy included running the offense through thunder. Coach's words lead us to believe they're going to be asking a lot of him today in terms of offense. And I'm sure he's only too happy to oblige. He focused next on what he feels will be their most reliable offensive approach, which is the use of ball screens and the pick and roll. That's a play we should be seeing a lot of. It's still very early in this game, so there's plenty of time for those changes to take effect, Kevin. All right, Doris, thank you very much. Mike Scott's checked in for Al Horford. Here's Caffey. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Well, he's a spot-up shooter, one of the best. One of those guys who, if you give him an inch, I mean, that's all it takes. He will let it fly and frequently knock down that shot. Steve, the other thing is he's really an extremely skilled ball handler, too. He's got a little flash and dash to his game, that's for sure. Well done again. He doesn't have the same problems at the line that plagues some of the NBA's other big men. Williams dishes to Millsap. Back to Williams. And so it looks like the Hawks will retain possession here. And a look at the top single season player efficiency ratings. I love this statistic. Wilt Chamberlain, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, and we've got some more modern talent representing as well. Yeah, you're talking the elites of the game when you go down that list. Interesting to see a, a new school stat kind of juxtaposed with the old school legends, but you know, the, the rankings obviously make sense if those guys are at the top. No good from Thunder. The Hawks trail by seven. You go back to the 2006 draft when Paul Millsap was taking 47th guy. Now remember, he had led college basketball in rebounding in all three of the years he played at Louisiana Tech. Three straight years leading the NCA. That's something that never had been done. Not even by a four-year play. And he ended up being drafted 47. Hard to figure how that could happen. But he's made the most of his time in the NBA. Williams, the shot misses. That's the kind of defense required when he's got the ball near the hoop. They were right in his face. Pushing their lead to double digits. And that's now 19 points for Thunder. I couldn't have dreamt of a much better start than what they've had here today. Everything's worked, especially offensively. And what a lead they have already to show for. And Clark, going back to that 2006 draft you were talking about, it wasn't exactly stacked. In fact, Millsap might be the second best player in that draft class, Steve, after LaMarcus Aldridge. Well, it's amazing when you look back. I mean, how did he slip through the cracks all the way to the second round? He might not have had prototype size uh, for the powerful position, but you know, it's all about production, and he was one of the great rebounders the college game had ever seen. They're setting the tone early here, Kevin. Side Williams. 
Those are the kind of nice inside looks they've gotten in the first half here. And I think they should really continue to work it down low, Clark. That's really going to free up the rest of their offense. Here's Thunder. He's got 22. From the arc. And another three for Minnesota. And that's what's built on this early lead. Deadly shooting from behind the arc. Yeah, the D better start getting out there on them, Steve, and soon. Now here is Augustine. 11 points for him in that last game against Phoenix. Did a great job picking the defense apart, too. It wasn't just his scoring. Give him credit for his passing in that game, too. There's a chance he could have a big game if they don't D him up more tightly on the perimeter. Here's Thunder. He's covered by Corp. And again, the basket is good from Thunder. Thunder's got 27. The Hawks trail by 12. Outside Williams. To the inside. Here's Scott. And the rejection by Love. And that one hits back iron. That's a tough one there because he's wide open. That's a shot he expects to make. Maria, the pass to Love. Here's Kathy, and there are the Timberwolves with another bucket. He may be the guy to put this game even farther out of reach. Down low. Addition out to Scott. The feed to Millsap. Fade away. That's good. Millsap's got his second bucket of the game to go. Well, he could have earned some style points there, but he really doesn't need to use the fadeaway when he's that wide open. Here's Kathy. And as we conclude the first quarter, a one-sided game so far. Timberwolves ahead, up by 12. And we'll get it going after this from the Target Center. Friday. March 20. The Hawks trail by 15. Half it in a shooting guard. Kevin Love out there with Brewer. Then there's Martin. And it's Shved in at the point guard. So that's the lineup for Minnesota. Here's Mack. He's covered by Shved. And now Minnesota on the fast break. The shot's good from Thunder. Thunder's got 31 points. His work at the offensive end has been phenomenal. Maybe reason number one, they're ahead. And I think Doris Burke has something for us right now. Doris? Yes, guys. Mike Budenholzer had some words for his team. He spoke very adamantly about being much more active in defending the perimeter shot, saying no more soft defense on the perimeter. I want you guys all over their shooters. Being in the position they're in, probably a smart move to go to the clipboard and switch things up while we're still in the first half. Kevin? All right, Doris, thanks. He hits the second from the line. So it's Minnesota now. They'll face the Lakers after this one. That'll be at home. And that game is the second of two straight at home. Yeah, and you know the fans out in L.A. really hoping for a win in that one. And that one's good. His shooting's been outstanding. Definitely one of the reasons his team is up in this game. Outside Williams. Kicks it to Horford. Good. The nice assist for Williams. And that's now seven points for Al Horford. And he's starting to pick things up here after a tough first quarter. Puts up a three. And again, the triple from Thunder. And he does it again. What can you say? The defense continues to allow him to get open out there. They've got to know that he can knock down that shot. Put somebody on him. Now here's Williams. 14 points from him the last game against Phoenix. Well, he was aggressive at both ends of the floor. He had three steals in that game, remember? Yes, yeah. yeah. Six on the shot clock. Horford, good. He is really having a good quarter, a strong quarter, an efficient quarter, doing a lot of positive things out there. He's feeling it. Millsap grabs the miss. Well, Millsap, a great signing with the Hawks. Two-year deal, $19 million. You like the skill level, a guy who battles inside. And even when he's at a size disadvantage, he still seems to, to really prosper. The Hawks trail by 17. Picked by Horford. 
And Mack kicks to Millsap. Goes up and lays it nice and easy. Millsap's got eight points. Love the interior passing. He knew exactly where to go with that ball. And you look at the development for Paul Millsap. He steadily improved as a passer, as a shooter at the line. His overall game is upward. He's even starting to shoot more threes these days. Right. Yeah, he's, he's undersized, but uh, just knows how to use the rim to protect his finish. I think what I like best about him is just his constant energy. Eldon Brands checked in for the Hawks. There's 47 seconds left now here in the second. And Williams, here we go. No good. And Minnesota will come the other way. Here's Caffey. Love trying to break loose. And no good. Trying to use the glass. The Hawks trail by 18. On the wing, Williams. Lots of room. And he hits the jump shot. Williams has got 13. An excellent display of passing out there, fellas. I mean, eight of their last 10 points have been assisted on. Well, they continue to find the open man and play unselfishly. This is true team basketball we're seeing. Here's Thunder. He's guarded by Williams. Releases. And he nails the jumper. 41 points for Thunder. Got a lot of momentum going with his own game. It's been great today. And just as hot as he was last time out. So as we conclude the first half, so far fairly one-sided. Timberwolves lead by 18. And coming up after the break, it'll be Damon Bruce breaking down all the highlights from the first half of play. Now, presented by Sprint. From the 2K Sports Studios, welcome. The season is in its final stages. Let's look back at today's action so far. The Minnesota Timberwolves have the lead against Atlanta. And from outside, you couldn't shoot it much better than this. They are scorching hot from beyond the arc. Through two quarters, Thunder in complete control. He's already put up a game's worth of points, been dialed in from downtown so far. For the Hawks, they have not been good early on. They've got to do a better job protecting the ball and valuing each possession. They've not done that. Their turnover number's way too high through two quarters. Lewis Williams making his presence felt early. 13 points and some nice plays offensively, getting the assists going. And now back to the game in Minnesota. Glad to have you with us here on 2K Sports. The Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. Well, it's been a one-sided affair so far through the first two quarters, but there's plenty of time to mount a comeback. Really an extraordinary game for Thunder. He's got 41 points, and he's buried a ton of three-pointers in this game, too. Yeah, it's getting it's hard to keep track of just how many of those he's hit. And now let's check out the lineups courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go for the second half of basketball. On the court for Atlanta, Jeff Teague and Lou Williams, the back. Martin is out there with Elton Brand, and it's Horford in at the pivot, manning the middle. No good from Thunder. Great job defending the hoop there. So important to have good presence defensively inside. Timberwolves leading by 16. Fires from deep, and that one's good. Thunder's got 44. That's a weapon they've been allowed to use at will today, Steve. I'll say the defense has been ineffective trying to run shooters off that three-point line. Now here's Teague. Horford sets a screen for Teague. Right side, Martin. The three. And it's Martin again missing. You know, nine times out of ten, he's going to... Oh, get it! Oh, 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 oh. What out now? Oh. Yeah, he put himself in great position to finish that break off, guys. Yep, right to the rack. And that was Kia bringing you the close-up on the big-time play. Second half of basketball, just over a minute played so far. Here's Teague, and that one's good. Great move to the hoop, and I love the finger roll finish. The Timberwolves have gone two of three from the field to start the second half. And it drops once again. The bucket from Thunder. Thunder's got 48. Now he's playing with an edge here, playing extremely well offensively here in the second half. Teague kicks to Brand. There's the steal, 
And now the Timberwolves on the break. Here's Rubio. And the bucket counts. And he's on his way to the free throw line. Try to make it a three-point play. They're getting on a roll inside. Their last three field goals have come from inside the paint area. The defense has to make an adjustment. They've got to string together some stops, or at the very least, try to force this team into some bad shots. Doris Burke has some information for us. Doris? Hi, Kevin. I was able to hear the advice Rick Adelman gave to his team during that break. He outlined a new set of priorities for them, the main one being to attack the basket at every opportunity. Those could prove to be crucial changes to their strategy with this game getting ready to enter the stretch drive, Kevin. And thanks for that story, Doris. Well, Mike Budenholzer, you know, the new coach of the Hawks, spent 19 years with the San Antonio Spurs, including 17 as an assistant. Well, you couldn't ask for a better teaching ground than that. Here's Williams after the made shot from Thunder. And you talk about huge single-game scoring performances like we're watching here tonight. Going back, only one plate. Think of this, only one plate in NBA history to go triple digits. And that's the Big Dipper, Wilt Chamberlain, on March 2nd, 1962. Yeah, 100 points. I mean, one of those records that stood a long time, and perhaps no player has so single-handedly dominated the game the way Wilt did. Been a stellar outing in this one for Williams. 15 points and some of his offense coming at the foul line with five points there. Yeah, five pretty big points, Clark. Back to Budenholzer, who was with the Spurs for 19 years. Steve, the Spurs, the winningest team in pro sports over the last 15 years. Yeah, I'm glad that Budenholzer has finally gotten his chance. I played for him for four seasons. He's a guy who loves the game. He's very dedicated, hardworking, and uh, has learned from probably the best coach in the NBA during his time in San Antonio. Teague against Rubio. Teague kicks to Horford. Back to Teague. Makes it off the glass. Teague's got four this quarter. Well, he wasn't phased at all by the bigger man on him. And on the low block, I thought he might be. You know, Steve, I thought maybe he'd prefer to bring him out to the perimeter. But whatever works, go to it. Careful. From outside, off the mark. Atlanta's gone 0 of 2 from deep to start things here in the second half. Teague with the ball, picked up by Love, and stolen by Pekovic. A finish. Rips down the breakaway slam. Well, there you go. One team operating on all cylinders at either end steals fast break buckets, and the other team scrambling to find its game. Yeah, they've done a great job causing havoc and then taking advantage in, uh, in transition offensively. Here's Teague. After the basket by Minnesota, kicks it to Williams. Puts up a three. Rubio with the rebound. Here's Caffey. That's good. It's Rubio with the assist. Rubio's got assist number eight now on the night. T dishes to Martin. Horford with a screen on Martin. Fires for three. Rubio with the rebound. Rubio's got his third rebound on the night. I think it's going to be tough for them to trim this deficit if he keeps missing those kinds of shots, Kevin. I mean, they need his points. Now here is Martin. After the miss from Thunder. Williams passes to Horford. Horford gets a screen from Brand. Lock at six. Williams attacking. Here's Horford, and they force the shot clock violation. Great team. Here's our 2K leaderboard with the list of the teams that have been on fire from beyond the arc over the past month. The Timberwolves, number one. I'll tell you what, when you have a month like this, the way they've been shooting it, you feel like the basket is three times as big as normal. I mean, it's hard to maintain this level of productivity, but we'll see if they can make it happen. You know, I don't get caught up in whether Horford is a power forward or center. All I know is he can ball, and his skill set allows him to be productive and consistent. Man, I don't know what happened right there. He just basically walked out of bounds. Atlanta making some changes. Paul Millsap's checked in for Horford. Scott comes in for Elton Brand. And it's Horford in for Cartier Martin. And guys, let's get your take on the hustle stats for the Timberwolves. Their defense has been outstanding, Kevin. Closing out on shots, blocking a lot of them as well. They've repeatedly gotten out on the break tonight as well and scored a lot of baskets in transition. 
and Horford, a great combination of skill, Stephen, toughness. Yeah, but he's one of my favorite players in the league. Just such a high skill level, but uh, tough and rebounds. He defends well. He can guard either the power forward or center position. And a winner. He won two NCAA championships at Florida. Now Augustine, after the miss, three from Thunder. And Augustine kicks to Millsap. Corver, good. Corver's got five now. That's how to orchestrate for your teammate. Terrific pass. Here's Thunder, defended by Corver. From 17 feet out, nice touch on the bank shot. Ellington's got his first bucket of the night. A big part of this run here has been their ability to hit from mid-range, guys. I mean, that's um, that's unique. Yeah, and some players and teams even shy away from that mid-range jumper, but this team seems to have it dialed in from that range. You know, he's showing some kind of a killer instinct this quarter, trying to stretch this lead out. Now here is Augustine. He's guarded closely. Corver, good. Yeah, he didn't have to slow down at all, guys. Just perfectly timed pass there. Doris Burke has an update for us. Doris? Hi, Kevin. I was able to hear the advice Rick Adelman gave to his team during that break. He said to his guys, let's get serious about driving the lane and putting pressure on their interior defenders. That's where he sees the soft spot in this defense. Perhaps the rest of the second half will look different after those adjustments, Kevin. Thanks again, Doris. Now Augustine, after the miss three from Thunder. 52 seconds left here in the third quarter. Augustine dishes to Millsap and stolen by Williams. Now Berea. And Kyle Korver picks up the foul. That is his first foul of the game. And the Hawks making a change here. There's 37 seconds left to play in the third. Got it. Nice one there from Thunder. He has really put his foot on the pedal this quarter, doing a tremendous job leading their offense. Now here is Augustine. He's covered by Ellington. Here's Schroeder. Rebound, Minnesota. Well, as far as jump shots go, that's as high percentage as it gets. I'm not sure how that didn't go down. Here's Millsap. Eight points for him. Schroeder passes to Corver. Outside for Millsap. Hits the three-point bomb. Millsap's got 11 points. Now you threaten the defense inside and then find the open man on the outside. Good offense. And at the end of the third quarter, a huge lead, and this one may already have been decided. The Timberwolves on top, just dominating this one. And time for the short break, and stay right where you are. The fourth quarter is coming up next. Next Sunday. And a moment now to take a look at our State Farm assist of the game. With six in the game, it's been some excellent court vision from Kevin Love. Well, he's been key to their ability to find the open man and really get the offense operating smoothly. Williams. Williams gets a screen from Horford. Outside Williams. Back to Brand. On the wing, Williams. Horford trying to free himself up. The shot by Williams, no good for Minnesota. They've gone three of four in field goal attempts since getting things started here in the fourth. Half he's in a shooting guard. Ahmed is out there with Brewer. Then it's Alexi Shved, and it's Williams at the five spot. So that's the lineup for Minnesota. Now here's Teague. Here's Horford. That's good, and so Teague with the assist. And that's 11 points for Al Horford. That bounce pass got him the ball in rhythm. Nice play. Here's Caffey. And count it. Two points with a chance for one more at the free throw line. Are not rotating nearly quickly enough on defense down low. Got to get quicker there. 
And even if it costs them some foul trouble, I mean, they need to start putting some bodies on bodies. Be physical. Cunningham, he's checked in for Lou Williams. Now here's Teague, feeds it to Horford. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Yeah, he got whacked. Shouldn't be much debate on that one. Yeah, that was as straightforward as it gets, guys. The Timberwolves making a switch here. Pekovic has checked in. The Timberwolves have gone five of six from the field to start the fourth quarter on a roll. I like the way they've played here in the first half. It's an intelligent floor game, getting good shots. The numbers certainly back that up. They're shooting a much better percentage. Outside Teague, right wing. Here's Horford, and it's blocked by Pekovic. Out of bounds, Atlanta will take possession. And here's what's up coming now for the Hawks. They'll be playing host to Portland for their next game. That game is the first and last of their homestand. Well, and you know the fans out in Portland hoping for a win for their Trailblazers, that's for sure. And the Hawks making a change here. Scott's checked in. Now here is Horford. And the pass to Martin. It's Scott on the wing. Dishes it to Horford. And misses it off the right side of the rim. Take what's available. Use the fadeaway when the defender's there on you. And stolen by Horford. Here's Scott. Here's Cunningham. Oh, that's blocked. Here's Schved. Pass to Thunder. There's the triple. Can't hit. Great D that time from Cunningham. Here's Teague. He feeds it to Horford. Here's Cunningham. But they'll get another chance. Second chance shot. And can't hit the shot. But they're saying he got hacked, so he'll head to the free throw line. Good game for Horford. 12 points. And he was able to come up with one steal, too. Yeah, he's defending very well, Clark. He's disrupting the, the offense. Uh, he's playing the passing lanes, trying to put as much pressure on as possible. Minnesota's gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Here's Caffey, buries the seven-footer. And so it's Atlanta with it. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time getting the lid off the basket so far. Rejected by Shved, and it's out of bounds to the Hawks as Atlanta retains possession. And a moment now to check out who Minnesota has coming up. They'll face the Lakers after this one. That'll be at home. And that game is the second of two straight at home. Horford fires with nobody on him. He buries the jumper. His shooting has been so good today. He may have to take it upon himself to try to get his club out of this hole. Here's Caffey. Rebound Atlanta. Teague's got four rebounds in this game. Pass to Cunningham. That's good. And so Teague with the assist. Teague's got his third assist on the night. Here's Thunder, Teague covering, and the shot is good. Thunder's got 12 points now in the quarter. Mm, they are killing them with that three-point shot here in the second half. Well, the defense fully stretched out trying to stop that shot and still not able to get it done. That's tipped. Teague kicks to Horford. And that one's good. And they've set up countless buckets off assists. That's a huge part of what they've been doing here today. A lot of dime dropping going on out there, Steve. Now here's Schved. Here's Caffey. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. Boy, he's got a nice-looking stroke. That almost went in. Yeah, a lot of times he'll hit that shot regardless of the defense. i tell you what, that's just a major unforced error right there, guys. My goodness. For the Hawks, Corver comes in for Martin, and DJ Augustine subbed in for Cunningham, and he gets it to go. I like the way he's not forcing anything, taking advantage of what the defense has given him. He's been a key contributor for them in this quarter. Here's Schroeder. He kicks it to Corver. Rejected by Pekovic, and they'll keep possession. They get it again. Horford gets the bucket. That's some tenacity inside, battling for the second chance points. 
Minnesota's gotten off four three pointers in the final quarter and two of them have fallen. Shots good from Thunder. Well, those are not the kind of three point opportunities you can give to shooters in the NBA. These guys are just too good. You're exactly right. It'll burn you every time, just like it's burning them here. And a dunk by Horford. Uh, Clark, I'm guessing that wasn't the plan for the D on that trip. And I'm agreeing <laughs> with you there. Once they open the lane up for him, that was a little emphasis on that finish. Take what the defense gives you and then just power it home, right? Why not? Well, it's a wrap, fellas. <laughs> no way you come back in this one. Not anymore. Any chance of that happening went out the window a while ago. Picked by Horford. 131 left in the fourth quarter. Shot clock at six. Corver, no luck. Minnesota's gone three of five from beyond the arc since the final quarter's gotten underway. And one team is just completely outclassing the other tonight. Spirited performance, and it really ignited what is turning out to be a monster win here for the Timberwolves. And this was one that never really was in doubt, I thought, Stephen Clark, uh, an all-around dominant performance. Clark, and you kind of thought that maybe even going into the game. I certainly did, and they just cracked it open and made it an in seat. No contest. Yeah. And on the year now, tonight's impending victory will push their win total to 47. And what a huge standout performance it was for Thunder. He was doing everything right, and the points seemed to come in bunches. He definitely had the hot hand. Boy, that was impressive, Clark. He did not hesitate to take the ball right up against the bigger defender. Boy, I like that aggressive mindset there, Steve. Here's Thunder. And too long on the shot. 36 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Over to the wing. And the layup falls. Minnesota's gone 4-7 with the long ball here in the fourth quarter. Cullen passes to Thunder. The three. And he gets it to go. And the fans loving what's transpired here tonight. A really good victory for these guys. Sure was. I mean, they did just what they needed to do to keep the visitors from getting any momentum going at all. Now McCullum. Here's Caffey. Off target from outside. Throws it from deep. No good. So it's Minnesota winning this one easy. They put on a show tonight thoroughly controlling each end of the floor. Hey, what more can you ask? And that about wraps it up for Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Doris Burke. This is Kevin Harlan thanking you for watching the NBA presented by 2K Sports. And now, Jordan presents our player of the game, Thunder. <laughs> ready, man? Hey, this dude is so funny, yo. <laughs> uh, what? Ready for what? It's decision time. Decision time, finally. I don't care, man. Thai, pizza, Italian, whatever you no, want. Oh, man. Decision. It's time to choose between the big dog, <laughs> Nike, and Jordan. What? Yeah, man. It's time to choose. <sighs> dude, I've been waiting for this day for a long time. I know, man. I know. And the thing is, is that they both feel like you're ready to be one of their athletes, all right? They, I mean, they pushing me hard, man. They, they want you to decide. Yo, it's not exactly an easy decision. No, I know, I know. That's why I'm gonna I'm I'm walk you through it, man. I'm gonna right. walk you through it, all right? So pay attention, listen real close, all right? And you decide what's best for you in your career. All right, so lay it on me. Start with Nike, what's up? All right, Nike, Nike, okay. Uh, first thing is that Nike, they're going to, uh, Give you decent money straight out the gate, nice. okay? And you're gonna get instant fans, man. I mean, just from being associated with the brand, right? And, uh, oh, they got promotional stuff for you, and you get access to all these shoes anytime you want. All right, you know yeah. I can dig that, bro. Yeah. That's cool, so what's up with Jordan, man? Well, Jordan's gonna give you the most money, all right? So if it's just about the cash, then you definitely wanna give them strong consideration. All right, and again, they got the promotional for you, and you get access to all their shoes. Oh, and, uh. You know being a Jordan athlete, I mean, that's a pretty exclusive club, you know what I mean? So you definitely want to think about that, too. Uh, 
Bro, honestly, I like it. I like what I'm hearing on both sides, man. So what's up? I'm just supposed to make a decision? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty much, pretty much. And, and remember, when you become a bigger star, man, you're going to get your own signature shoe. Ooh. Regardless of who you choose. Ooh. That's what I'm talking about. You know I can't wait for that. All right, man, let me think about this a minute. It's a tough decision. Yo, I gotta go with Nike. They're huge. I just don't see how we can go wrong with them. Great choice, man. I'll get the paperwork sorted. From here on out, consider yourself an official Nike athlete. That's what I'm talking about. Boy. <laughs> Yo, man, you gotta make a decision on dinner. I'm not making this decision. <laughs> I gotta make all the decisions. Yeah, man, I feel you. Let's get some pizza, man. All right. Yeah? Let's do it. All right, let's go. Come on. 